For day 9 of the reverse health meal plan, you have the option of a mango bowl or a strawberry bowl. I did a combination of both with a slight modification. Both of these call for natural quark, which I couldn't find, so I went with some organic yogurt instead. Then I added some granola, chopped up strawberries, and coconut flakes. This was a very yummy breakfast and a great way to start off the day. We are getting ready to make a tuna and quinoa tossed salad. So step one is to make the quinoa according to directions and as always we're making modifications based on what we have available to us and what I already have at home. So the only quinoa I can find at our store is this organic quinoa and brown rice with garlic and we get to make this in the microwave. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Step one is to squeeze to separate the rice. Squeeze and separate all the rice here. Then step two is to tear two inches to bent. So sis is gonna come and tear two inches for ventilation. Vent it. And now we're gonna go put it in the microwave for a minute and a half. Be right back. We're gonna go ahead and start working on the dressing. So we need one tablespoon of olive oil. And I'll go ahead and grab that. Let me move the bowl out of the way so you guys can see what she's doing here. Hopefully. Hopefully we can see. Camera's so far away from us. And then we're supposed to have two teaspoons of red wine vinegar. I didn't purchase that and I had rice vinegar for another one so we thought, hey, we'll give it a try. <laughs> so we're going to have two teaspoons of red, uh, of rice vinegar. I don't know why I went back to reading the instructions when I literally just said, <laughs> How old is that? That's fine. Okay. I couldn't tell if you. Oh my, it's so strong. I'll, I'll just put half because I think I might have spilled a little. Okay. I just. You may not think it's so overwhelming. I just thought. It is. Okay. Um, and then one teaspoon of fresh lemon juice. Um, did you forget to grab the Dijon? Yes. Okay, well, we'll do the lemon juice and then we'll. I can go get that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like it. The seeds out, you can go get the Dijon. <laughs> okay, I think you got the juice and you're just adding more seeds. <laughs> okay, so we will. I'll give this a little bit of a stir while she grabs the Dijon. One teaspoon just Dijon mustard. You probably have to do a little shake, 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 shake. Shake the mustard. Shake the mustard. Everything's like blocking their view here. <laughs> okay, now we're just going to stir that up. And we're gonna hope for the best. Because that, I can still smell the vinegar so strongly. Yeah. yeah. So we might remix it, we'll see. Depending on what it tastes like. I only did it a bit on my finger, but almost like lemon's the strongest. Mm -hmm. So I think we're gonna go ahead and use this. I would say if I used it again, I would probably cut down the vinegar a little bit. So maybe half a teaspoon. 
would be my probably my goal there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start like mixing things that we need in here. First of all, our quinoa is all finished. And we probably should have gotten some scissors and we, you know, <laughs> didn't. Oh, cool. that was good. Okay, so opened it up and we're just gonna pour it in here. Mm, that smells yummy. Okay, so then we are supposed to do about half a cucumber, but we do have quite a small homegrown little cucumber here. So we're just gonna use the whole thing. I think. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna chop that up and I'll just let you chop that up, I guess. And then we will add it to our bowl. We also are to use 10 little old cherry tomatoes. Okay, we're gonna add our cucumbers, which we chopped up and then we went ahead and cut them in half. Like if you use the back of a knife, it doesn't dull your knife. Yeah. Do you want me to do that part? You got it? And then you won't cut me either. If I stick my finger in your way. <laughs> Same. Okay, now our chin, our chin, our tin cherry tomatoes there. Do we need to cut those? Mm -hmm. Chop those up. Oh! While she's doing that, I was supposed to got this one time we did the seasoning. <laughs> I'm supposed to add salt and pepper to this. So while she's chopping up the cherry tomatoes, I'll add a little pepper and a little salt and give it a little taste. A little, little. If the salt ever comes out, there we go. Tastes better with the more in it, with the stuff in it, or? The longer it sits, the more vinegary it tastes. So do we need to remake it? What do you think? Well, your face tells me yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, we can remake it. Oh, you have the cherry tomatoes done. Very good. All right, we are also to drain a can of chickpeas and add it, and then two cans of um, semen. No, no, what is this called? Tuna. 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 Uh, drain them and add them. So we're gonna go open them and drain them, and then <laughs> inside our bowl and start this over. We'll be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the second round of the dressing, which of course starts with one tablespoon of the olive oil. And we've got that in there now. And then back to, we're going to half a teaspoon now of this rice vinegar. So we got a half teaspoon out here. Just a little tiny bit's all we want. Good enough for me. <laughs> There we go. And then it is the one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And let me try to move this stuff kind of out of our way a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here other than making a mess. Then we're still going with the one teaspoon of fresh lemon juice. So we've got our other half of the lemon that we're gonna use. Hopefully this time it tastes good because this is our last half of the lemon. All right, now I'm gonna season with salt and pepper. Sure, feel free to come sit down, sis. You don't have to stand there waiting. Sis went ahead and went and drained our chickpeas and tuna. Ooh, that tuna smells so strongly. Like tuna. 
<laughs> and I reread the directions. Good for me. And <laughs> we need one fourth cup of the chickpeas. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add feta cheese. We're supposed to add a tablespoon, so I have my half a tablespoon here. And so we'll add two of those. Our tuna, we'll just use our, well, you haven't tasted this yet. I don't know if you like it. <laughs> I hate to use the same fork. If you don't like it. Yeah, you got a good taste. Mm -hmm. Tuna number one. That one's much more. Much more less juicy. <laughs> and then we need the one fourth cup of uh, chickpeas there. So this time our dressing does taste extremely lemony, so that's much better to us anyway. The chickpeas have been drained, but since we had to change the card out, since the other one was full, I thought visually they would look better in a bowl. And we did decide to do one more, one fourth cup, just because with everything else in here, one fourth cup just wasn't very much. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do a mess. That's what we're gonna do, because that's what we're good at. When we cook together, we both just <laughs> outdo each other. And my dog likes it. Okay. Stir, stir, stir. Looks pretty yummy, I think. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, I do want you to try this one more time. Make sure it doesn't need any more salt, any more pepper before we pour it on. enough a little bit more? Probably. Give it a try. Mm -hmm. We have decided it's delicious, maybe. a couple bowls. This recipe is supposed to serve two people. Perfect. For mm -hmm. me and sis. We're going to give it a taste. I'm surprised. I like it. Well, I don't like tuna, so. <laughs> but the, the cucumber really tones down the fishy yeah. tuna taste. I'm not the biggest fan of tuna in the world either, but I do think it tastes pretty good. So, pretty easy to make. It took us a little longer than I expected just because we kept forgetting to grab things but I do think that generally this would not take you very long to make because there wasn't a whole lot of cooking so pretty yummy recipe we are getting ready to make some healthy chocolate balls and I will put the name of them up on the screen because I have no clue how to pronounce them and we're gonna start off with one cup of hazelnuts and we are going to put them into the food processor and then we blitz them until they're nice and crumbled up. Okay, we're gonna have to blitz them a little at a time because when we filled it up with the cup, it kept spitting the blade up. We've got them all pulsed up, so we're gonna start adding our other ingredients. Two tablespoons of cocoa, so. And then we were supposed to use, I think it was like a gov syrup or something, but I looked up to see what that was and they said honey was an alternative and it was actually a healthier alternative. And I have honey. And I like honey, so we're gonna use honey, two tablespoons of that in here. Okay, and then a pinch of our sea salt there, sis. We need two, two tablespoons of our dark chocolate chunks, and then one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And it does say if the mixture ends up being too dry, then we can add some water. Okay, and then we just pulse this until it starts mixing together. Okay, it looks like it started to come together and we can probably start forming our balls now, so we're gonna do that. We're going to start forming them into bite-sized balls, and then we stick 
a hazelnut into the middle of the bowl. And then you can serve these immediately or you can put them in the fridge for later. Uh, we are making them now, but we're going to put them in the fridge for later. This size? Yeah, it's about the size I'm making. Don't forget your hazelnut. I almost think it'd be easier to have the hazelnut and form it around the hazelnut. Yeah. And it is thundering and lightning here and just a good old storm. If you can hear that on the camera. It's supposed to be inside. You stick the hazelnut inside. Oh, I thought you meant like uh, inside like when you make a kiss cookie or something. And I can't get it inside. Yeah, they don't want to form with it inside. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> I could get it to form just side fine without it inside. Yeah. So I may not be able to put one inside. I don't think we're gonna be able to. Which is fine. Okay, I think we're going to forego the hazelnut inside, <laughs> which probably makes them less healthy. But oh well, we have lots of hazelnuts in it. So we will see you in just a moment when we finish all of our little chocolate balls. All right, we have them all made up here and we're getting ready to put them in the fridge because we're gonna enjoy them later this evening. But we did test the dough out while we were making them and they taste like no bake cookies. So they are a very delicious little treat. So, but it does say if you don't eat them right away to put them in the fridge. So we are going to do that. We may record that and we may not, we're not sure. So we wanted to go ahead and give you our consensus statement that they taste very yummy. Like we can even try a little piece of the dough for you because there's a little bit left over here that we didn't roll up. And it's a very yummy tasting. Mm -hmm. And that's from someone who does not like dark chocolate at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> so very good.